impact investing is not just for startups, it is definitely for all sorts of companies. Hi, I'm Dawn. I'm the CEO for the Center of Impact Investing and Practices. Happy to be here to talk impact. When we first to impact, it actually talks about an intention to make a positive environmental and or social um, change to create a solution. So that's the actual impact in impact investing. Now that happens alongside making a financial return. In the best case scenario, that happens when your business model is perfectly aligned with impact. So for example, if your business model is developing a product that reduces energy usage, the more your business grows, the larger the impact that you have. Impact investing is not just for startups, it is definitely for all sorts of companies. Startups are uh, most in the spotlight because they, have, they start from a clean sheet. Your entrepreneurs could start with a very clear intention um, from the get-go, from day one, that they want to address a particular problem, um, whether it's education or waste management, that is something that they can do from a very clean slate. But it's not just for startups. We have also seen large companies also embark on their own impact journey. And I would like to highlight, it's not just the idea of switching your whole business strategy around. It could be also working with your supply chain, the various players in your supply chain. Are you ensuring that the people who supply the goods to you, are they making an adequate living? What's your impact on community? There are multiple challenges when it comes to impact investing. First of all, I'll address it from the side of the investors. There's a great deal of interest and the capital already being deployed to address ESG, climate. There's also a little bit of confusion um, around the whole idea of impact investing and how does it all fit um, amongst all these uh, various topics and classification, um, as well as the confusion sometimes around uh, philanthropy. But Actually, when you think about it, ESG is actually a foundation for impact investing. There is a continuum of capital that's actually required for the entire space. So at each stage of the company's life, um, different sources of capital are appropriate. The second challenge is actually for companies. Companies need to understand um, that it's not only sufficient to say that, you know, I identify myself as an impact company. They need to very diligently monitor and measure the positive and negative impact that the company is making, whether it's intended or unintended, and then to make it public. And this sort of commitment um, is actually required if we don't want to get into areas of impact washing as well. We've also seen impact practices affect companies in various other ways. Firstly, we've seen a huge preference, and this has been in various surveys, um, that millennials, the consumers of today, um, actually prefer are companies with a very stated purpose. This is not only for their buying preferences, it's also for the companies that they want to work with. So as a company itself, having a stated purpose, um, and you're not just thinking about profit at the expense of the people or the planet, um, that helps you att attract talent and retain talent, and it actually affects your bottom line. When you look at Asia, it's actually a really interesting place. It's home to 60% or more of the world's population. And actually, um, as we sort of reported in our Accenture and SMU report, their level of digitization actually is really high, so about 75%. And that's actually higher than the world's um, average of 60%. And what that means is that there's actually opportunity to create impact actually at scale. When you think about the amount of financing, that's actually estimated to be required to fulfill the SDGs. Um, OECD estimates that at US 3.7 trillion. That's a huge amount. Um, but there's also a vast opportunity, actually, when you think about businesses and investors to actually deploy capital and make purposeful returns. We're working with actually the UNDP SDG impact team and all the country offices and various stakeholders in the region to actually identify the areas which might be of interest to both investors as well as companies. When you think about impact investing, impact investing is not only thinking about solutions for the environment, it also addresses the social um, fabric that and the communities that we work with. And this is crucial for companies. So even when you think about environmental um, issues and climate change and the energy trans transmission, investment in renewables, we must also think about the other um, side of the coin. This is when you hear terms like a just transition. Um, when you think about the shutting down of coal plants or mining, um, what are you doing with the communities that actually depend on those jobs? 
Um, are you training them? Are you reskilling them? Are you redeploying them? When you think about your supply chain um, and companies that are hugely focused on this, are you ensuring that your companies actually pay a fair wage? Are you generating jobs for the community? So it's not just the environment, but also the social good and the social impact um, that impact investing addresses. And this would include areas education, healthcare. And these are major areas um, of opportunity that we see in Asia and we'll highlight it actually in the SDG investor maps. SIP will be adopting a multi-pronged approach to actually building the impact ecosystem. The first is building an extensive body of knowledge on impact investing. The second, convening the community and supporting the impact community. And third is catalyzing collective action. The first, in terms of building an extensive body of knowledge, there are lots of information gaps. We also want to address and inspire and spotlight companies um, in Asia, which are already embarking on the impact journey. In our first report of Accenture and SMU, we've already highlighted five case studies. We will be dropping more and we'll continue to do this um, going forward. In addition to the, um, such case studies, we're actually embarking on research. Um, there are significant information gaps around impact investing. What is the baseline? What is the state of affairs in Asia? Um, so this is where, you know, SIP will be putting some money to work and investing in research. In terms of convening and uh, working and supporting the ecosystem, we look forward to working with the various stakeholder groups in the impact ecosystem. We have the companies themselves who are very, working very hard to grow their businesses and actually do impact on the ground. We think about the asset owners and the capital providers. And then we also think about the advisors to the capital providers. How can we help and sort of uh, link uh, all three parties? provision of actually education modules. And this is where we'll work with various parties, such as the Wealth Management Institute, to actually launch programs to introduce impact investing and practices to all the various parties. Lastly, in terms of catalyzing collective action, this is where we'll work with multilateral organizations, such as uh, the Global Impact Investing Network, AVPN, to actually see how we can su further support the, the ecosystem. Um, this could mean work around certification and standards. This could mean, you know, supporting services um, for startups um, to address the sort of capability gaps in the region as well. We're looking forward to working with industry partners, multilateral organizations as we build this ecosystem. Whether you're interested in contributing to the body of knowledge or if you're interested to learn more and be trained in impact practices so that you can help companies as they grow and go on their impact journey, we'll love to be able to help and work with you.